Okay. Uh, bonjour tout le monde. Hello everybody across the country. My name is Jeff Nankavel. I am the president and CEO of the Asia Pacific Foundation of Canada. I'm speaking to you from our head office uh, here in uh, Vancouver in beautiful British Columbia. Um, and I'd like to start by acknowledging that this, this office where I am today is located on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territories of the Squamish, Musqueam, and tsleil peoples. Uh, we acknowledge at APFC that places that Canadians call home are the traditional territories of many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples. And we're grateful to Canada's Indigenous peoples for their stewardship of the lands on which we live, work, and play. Uh, C'est un grand plaisir de vous accueillir uh, ce, ce matin ici à, à Vancouver, cet après-midi dans, dans l'Est. Um, and uh, I will be joined uh, today by our very good partners uh, from Universities Canada in, uh, in just a minute. I'll be introducing Julia Scott. Um, and we're, we're really looking forward to talking to you about the Canada and Asia Conference. Um, by way of, of introducing the conference, I would just say uh, myself having joined the Asia Pacific Foundation in September 2021 after a 33 year career as a diplomat for Canada in Asia. Um, I, I, I arrived in Vancouver to this job with the thought that it would be great if we could do something to have a kind of flagship event in Asia that would bring together Canadians, Canada-connected people, and those interested in engaging with Canada from all across Asia, and to bring them together with key players in Asia engagement from across Canada, uh, institutions, firms, associations, uh, governments, and individuals. And the uh, really the hook that we found for doing that came through the partnership that we established with Universities Canada in 2021 um, to launch this as a joint project. Uh, alors, nous, nous avons créé le concept du Conférence Canada en Asie. So we, we launched the Canada and Asia conferences uh, with our inaugural conference in February of, of 2023. Um, and, uh, and what we are doing in practical terms is working together with Canada's universities to have the universities invite their alumni from all across the Indo-Pacific region, from India, South Asia, Southeast Asia, uh, China, Japan, Korea, North Asia, Australia, New Zealand, the Pacific, um, to come to a gathering that is not mainly about being alumni, although there's time set aside for that, to engage with the universities, but as a, as a critical mass of Canada-connected people, also representing firms and institutions and, and governments, um, uh, to which we then add, we bring in business leaders from, from Canada, business leaders from across Asia, uh, Chambers of Commerce, uh, Canada's uh, government representatives from across Asia, and uh, various institutions and uh, government agencies from across Canada with an interest in engaging in Asia. And the, and the point of the exercise is, uh, number one, to create a platform on an ongoing basis, a flagship event every year in the same place in Singapore at more or less the same same week of February uh, each year where uh, those people who are interested in Canada, Asia engagement from whichever angle know that there's going to be a big event and they can, they can organize their, their travel and their calendars around that and come together. And the first conference that we held in 2023 was a huge success, uh, greatly exceeded our wildest expectations. More than 530 uh, people attended the conference, 55% of them. Uh, people based in Asia, but also uh, more than 240 who made the trip out from Canada. It was good proof of concept from our point of view that you can do this kind of thing, including we had 24 university presidents and we had senior leaders from the world of business and government, both federal and provincial, and also municipal from across Canada. Um, and then we did a second uh, conference, uh, two conferences back to back on agri-food and 
climate solutions in 2024. And the pattern that we've established with strong support from stakeholders, from the private sector, from the public sector, from the universities and research ecosystem sector, um, is that we'll do a broadly based conference with multiple themes every second year. So the first one was in 2023. The next one is coming up in just a few months in February of 2025 uh, in Singapore. And in the in-between years, we would do thematic conferences uh, based on the interest of our stakeholders from Canada and Asia. So the first two thematic conferences were on um, agri-food and on climate solutions. So. Um, I'm really excited about where we're going with this. Uh, as the Asia Pacific Foundation, we are opening an office in Singapore in the coming months with new resources that we're getting under the Indo-Pacific strategy that will enable us to launch other events and programs similar to the Canada and Asia conferences in the region, particularly Southeast Asia and, and South Asia. But the, the Canada and Asia conferences are about all of Asia and Canada. And with that, it's my great, great pleasure to introduce our great partner and colleague, uh, the Vice President of Member Services from Universities Canada, Julia Scott, to take it from here. Julia. Hello, everyone. I'd uh, just like to start by echoing Jeff's enthusiasm and thanks for joining us today for this information session on the upcoming Canada and Asia conference next year. Uh, it's really fantastic to see such strong interest in, in what has quickly become one of the most dynamic platforms for building stronger ties between Canada and Asia. So for those of you who don't know, uh, Universities Canada is the voice of Canada's universities. We represent 96. Actually, I need to change uh, I need to change that number because yesterday we welcomed UConn University to our membership. So now 97 universities across the country and we're dedicated to advancing higher education research and innovation uh, and advocating for policies that support university excellence and global competitiveness as well as social progress uh, nous sommes ravis de collaborer de nouveau cette année avec la fondation asie pacifique pour organiser la conférence canada en asie et au cours des dernières deux années cette conférence a réuni une, une grande diversité de voix de leaders uh, qui, viennent par, qui parviennent du Canada et de l'Asie, uh, favorisant des discussions et des collaborations. Et grâce à, à l'énergie et aux perspectives des dirigeants universitaires, uh, des, des, des chefs politiques et des experts de l'industrie, nous avons constaté, constaté des, des avancées remarquables dans la création et le renforcement uh, des liens qui, qui dépassent largement uh, le, le cadre de l'événement. Donc, chaque année, la conférence prend de l'ampleur et gagne en impact avec un nombre croissant d'universités, d'organisations et de personnes qui s'engagent à participer à ces conversations essentielles sur l'avenir des partenariats entre le Canada et l'Asie. So, a huge part of our success is, is really thanks to the partnership uh, that we have with the Asia Pacific Foundation. And together, we've created a space where Canadian and Asian leaders can discuss not only education and research, but innovation and economic growth and and the cultural exchanges that enrich our, our societies. And, and the APF has really been an outstanding partner, bringing deep expertise and regional insights. Um, and we're truly grateful for their commitment to building a stronger Canada-Asia corridor. Uh, for 2025, we're delighted to announce that universities across Canada have already shown very strong support with many very eager to engage in this year's conference. And I think that enthusiasm really highlights the value that they see in building partnerships in Asia, um, strengthening Canada's presence on a global stage, particularly in these challenging times, um, and collaborating to tackle some of today's most pressing issues together. So for, the, for us, this year's themes uh, promise very exciting opportunities for research partnerships and collaboration and, and cross-sector innovation. And we're committed to making Kayak 2025 a, a very high impact experience for everybody involved. So you'll have the chance uh, to meet with, engage with some of the top minds in, in our universities and academia and government and in industry from both regions. We convened our members uh, in Ottawa just over the past few days, and Jeff had the opportunity to speak with a number, a number of them, and those who are already registered to attend, some who are sponsoring, and some who 
hopefully after some more information sh uh, sharing will attend as well. So we're really pleased once again to have each of you join us in, in learning more about the conference and hope you'll consider becoming a part of this initiative. Um, I think I think I'll close by just saying that Kayak 2025 is much more than just a conference. It's it's really a gateway to lasting partnerships and meaningful dialogue and and hopefully future shaping ideas. So thanks to all of you for being here once again, and uh, we really look forward to a, a more powerful and trans transformative Canada and Asia conference in 2025. So with that I'll pass back to Jeff. Thanks. Uh, thanks so much for that, Julia. And without uh, without any uh, further ado, I would like to introduce um, the the leader of our team for the Canada and Asia conference. His uh, uh, our senior program manager at APF Canada, Jordan Dupuis, who is uh, based in our Toronto office. And I think you have some things to share, Jordan, including on the screen. So let me hand it over to you. Thank you, Jeff. And I am in the process of sharing some screen here. Okay, what we see here, this is Singapore. Iconic, iconic uh, image of Singapore. Some things going, some other things going on, on on this slide here. To the bottom right, you'll see the logos of both Universities Canada and the Asia Pacific Foundation of Canada. You've heard about the collaborative partnership that we've engaged in. Um, bringing the Canada in Asia conference, the logo on the left of the screen, uh, now into its into its third year. Very, very productive partnership. Um, the, the other thing that, that the, the, sort of the image in the background, when you arrive in Singapore, there are a number of things you notice. You notice lots of tall buildings. You see them in the background and sparkling water. There's a Ferris wheel that you see when you come in on the highway from, from the airport. There's also this rather iconic building on the left. It has three vertical. Um, uh, this is a hotel and, and apartment structures with, with a, a connector on the top. Now this is called Marina Bay Sands and it has a, a tangential connection to the, uh, to the conferences that uh, the Canada and Asia conferences that we're running. Uh, it was designed by a Canadian American Israeli architect named Moshe Safdie, um, and uh, he designed not only this building, but he designed uh, the jewel structure at Singapore Changi Airport. Um, his his first major um, globally renowned work was uh, was for Expo sixty seven, the housing, um, the uh, sort of next generation apartment housing. Um, structure from uh, called Habitat 67 that, that was part of the, the 1967 Expo in Montreal and Moshe Safdie was uh, a keynote speaker at the inaugural Conf Canada and Asia conference in 2023. So there is a there is a Canadian landmark Canadian inspired landmark in this uh, in this very iconic image of Singapore. So the Canada and Asia conferences the word, the word conference is really important. Yes, there's, there's lots of uh, concurrent sessions and panel sessions and lots of discussions. But in some way, the word conference underplays the, the series of activities that we convene over nearly a week in, uh, in February every year. We really conceive of, of the Canada and Asia conference as a, a multi-directional platform uh, for engagement, both Canada to Asia and Asia back, back to Canada. It's an opportunity for, for companies, for universities, for investors, for institutions, for governments, multiple different levels of govern, governments, to meet, to connect um, with their partners, with potential partners on the other side of the Pacific Ocean. This is really about bringing leaders together. This is about creating opportunities for collaboration and partnership. The, the atom type of icon that you see down in, in the bottom left corner. This is this is really our way of of connoting the high value networks, the the, the connectivity um, uh, that that the conference and, and the week of activities through the conference can generate. The person standing behind the podium in, in the center of your screen here is. Um, it's about sharing perspective, sharing experience, sharing expertise, 
Um, and it's about delivering key messages and important messages um, to your uh, to your partners and potential partners. And in the bottom right corner, you'll see the Canadian maple leaf. This is really indicative of um, bringing a presence of Canada in a reliable, consistent and dependable way um, regularly uh, and with certainty. And, and, and the word that, that we've developed and, and thank, uh, thank Jeff for, for bringing this, this concept to us is, is this, this concept of mind share that, that Canada, Canadian institutions, Canadian universities and companies will keep coming back, will keep um, being present and uh, will be dependable partners for leaders in the Asia Pacific region. This next slide, there's there's a lot going on here. Um, some important some important parts just off the top are the dates. February nineteenth to twenty first uh, next year is is when the um, uh, the conference will be taking place, starting with a, an evening reception. Uh, on Wednesday, February the 19th, a full day program on February the 20th, which is a Thursday, and then a half day program on Friday the 21st, culminating uh, with a lunch session, uh, a session over lunch that ends at, at 2 p.m. So the the next point is, is that there are a series of plenary sessions, full conference, uh, full attendee uh, at these sessions. And in the plenary sessions, we're, we're looking at big picture topics. We're looking at geopolitics. We're looking at sustainable infrastructure. We're looking at um, some questions about space and space exploration. Um, one, one that is not here on, on this list is the global competition for talent. Big picture topics that are of relevance um, on, on both sides of the Pacific across lots of, lots of, uh, lots of organizations. In the concurrent sessions, between the plenaries, we've divided our sessions into four priority sectors. Those four sectors are, number one, agri-food and food security, number two, clean tech, number three, energy transitions and energy security, and number four, ocean technologies and the blue economy. Uh, as, as Jeff had indicated off the top, we've identified these four sectors for the 2025 conference in close consultation. Uh, with our partners in Canada uh, and in Asia. And these are really, um, op these are um, vertical sectors in, in which Canada can bring um, uh, expertise, competitive advantage, and a lot of knowledge and, and know-how um, to contribute into, uh, into ecosystems in, uh, across the Asia Pacific region. These are the, the vertical areas in which we're um, uh, organizing sessions. And if we go down uh, to the fourth bullet point here, you'll see a discussion of, of engagement tracks. These are the horizontal um, areas that we're using to organize both the um, content of all of the um, concurrent sessions, each of the panels that, that we're looking at, but also uh, it's a way to these are a way to give a logic for um, uh, why additional folks would want to engage with the conference. And you'll see this here um, in, in a schematic. You'll see arranged by color, uh, the, the four different sectoral areas. And you'll also see that uh, underneath there is a, an engagement track identified. And if you start in the top right corner, you'll see that we have the uh, energy transitions, energy security, uh, sectoral vertical, um, without a, twinned with artificial intelligence. So this is, this is the session that brings together these two concepts. If you go down one step and across to the left, you'll see that clean technology is now twinned with artificial intelligence. Again, you go down uh, one step and one to the left, ocean tech and artificial intelligence, and in the bottom, uh, left corner, agri-food and, and, and artificial intelligence. So these are four consecutive sessions um, that would be attractive to a, profession, to a professional who works in the artificial intelligence um, realm. Similarly, um, there are, we have engagement tracks for trade and supply chains, for investment and finance and for innovation ecosystems. So if these are your areas of business, if these are what motivate your professional activities, 
there's there's a whole lot in this uh, in the Canada and Asia Congress as 2025 for you. I'd just like to switch now to to say a little bit about who uh, who we're expecting to be in attendance. Um, we're expecting about 700, uh, 700 attendees from both sides of the Pacific, um, leaders across business, uh, across governments, from universities. These are researchers, these are innovators, um, these are investors, and so forth. Um, the attendee profile at, uh, at the Canada and Asia Conference in 2024 was 75% from Asia, and 25% from Canada. We're, we're envisaging about the same um, uh, in 2025. And while the conference is taking place in Singapore, we're very, uh, we're, we're deliberate in, in this being a Canada, all of Asia conference, not just a Canada Singapore conference. It takes place in Singapore, but attendees from the Asia Pacific region won't only be from Singapore. 2024 conference attracted participants from 19 different economies across the Asia Pacific region and 35 different city areas. There's a good diversity of, uh, of, of representation from across the region. And in terms of the sectoral breakdown of, of who will be in attendance, again, the 2024 conference we think is a, is a good indicator of, um, of who will, will be participating. About 60% from the private sector, uh, about 20% uh, from from governments um, and and other agencies and such from uh, from the public sector and a little, little over uh, twenty percent from universities and the research sector. This is a really broad group. Um, it's a very senior group as well. About a quarter of of all the attendees were CEOs or other senior level executives, and about half. Uh, were were from the director level and and above. This is a senior senior group of decision makers. And here maybe I'll I'll just point to this this slide sort of asks asks why attend and offers some suggestions based that that we have identified at, at the start of developing the the twenty twenty five conference. Um, really, the conference offers a, a wonderful opportunity to connect to showcase your strengths, to share key messages about what your organization, um, what your organization's objectives are, what your competitive advantages are, and how you can contribute to moving forward solutions in partnership with, with other organizations. And this is the small and mighty team at the Asia Pacific Foundation uh, of Canada that that works on uh, that works on bringing together the um, the Canada and Asia conferences. That's it for me. Thanks everybody, and happy to uh, to connect and, and answer questions. If you do, uh, if if you want to follow up, please take a look at the website there, Canada hyphen in hyphen Asia dot ca. Epare en français avec le fr après le ca. Um, kayak at asiapacific.ca uh, is another way to get in touch with all of us. Thank you very much for your attention. So, merci Jordan, thank you very much. Um, we have in the, so there's a Q&A function here and I, we welcome your, uh, your questions. Um, and we have, I have one question in the, in the Q&A, which is, um, uh, which is one that I would love to address. So the so the the, um, uh, the question is is whether we can uh, seriously consider offering something virtually at least once a year, so that all Canadian institutions, whether they can afford to travel to Singapore or not, will get to participate. Um, uh, and um, you know, in a world where the bigger institutions have the resources to do this kind of thing, and uh, and the smaller ones. Uh, find it challenging. Um, so, uh, you know, we, uh, we're looking as we develop the, the conferences, um, we are also uh, building out our, our multimedia capacity. On the website, you can see if you, if you look into the past events tab on the Canada and Asia conferences web pages, 
you, you can see some video and quite a lot of audio of, of sessions from the previous conferences and we're working towards making all of the sessions uh, available after, after the conference um, uh, available in one form or another so those who are not able to attend can, can access the, uh, the conversations. Um, in terms of, um, of, of virtual events, this is something that we're looking at also. I mentioned in my introductory remarks that, that at, the, at APF Canada, we're right now in the process of, of opening uh, a regional office in Singapore, an office for Asia, uh, for the foundation and, to, and as a platform for our, our many partners across Canada and Asia to do various things. We'll have a team in place in Singapore and we're going to be doing more events of this nature. We're going to keep uh, the Canada and Asia conferences, or kayak as we call them, uh, as the flagship event. But we will be doing, uh, we'll have a new ability and resources to be able to do more, uh, more uh, sector themed events, regional, sub regional events. And, uh, and we're, we're going to be looking at ways in which we can bring partners together uh, from Canada and Asia. Um, uh, in in virtual uh, form, in virtual forums, it's a it's a pretty big challenge. You know, the conference uh, itself, um, we have really resisted the temptation to to go hybrid with the conference because um, from our from our stakeholders and our own assessment, um, the conclusion is that we really want to get people together in person and have that mix of uh, private sector, you know, business uh, business leaders, uh, people from universities, people from government agencies, people from associations, you know, agriculture producer associations from Canada, professional associations across Asia, um, and it's getting that mix and and building in time for networking that is really uh, in support of of uh, a prime objective for this this venture, which is to, to broaden and deepen networks for Canada and Canadians across Asia by connecting Canada-connected people and firms and institutions in Asia with each other, and by building those connections between those networks and, the, and networks across Canada. So the, so the in-person part of it is quite important, and, um, and it, it would not be right to say that only the big institutions come from Canada. We have, we have quite a range of, of university partners. We're anticipating also some colleges for this year uh, will be coming in person. And it's not, it's not for every institution um, of the 97 that Julia mentioned. Um, uh, but for those, there are, uh, for example, uh, smaller higher education institutions in Canada who have an Asia strategy and have decided that that's their priority for international engagement. And really the best way to do that is to, is to, to come and to be there in person. Um, at the same time, we want to, uh, we will be finding more ways to make the rich content of the conference available to those who are interested and want to hear the conversations, to have access to the information. Um, that's partially available already, but we are building out the functionality to be able to do that in a more comprehensive way. In terms of having the people who, part, who, who, would, who can only participate virtually to have a kind of interactive experience, that's a, that's a, that's a big challenge. But, but we're open to suggestions and, and looking at different models during COVID. I was Consul General of Canada in Hong Kong. I got to, to take part in or be an observer at some some, uh, some um, virtual trade uh, show type type events. There's there are ways to do it, and, and we're certainly open to doing that. Um, uh, Julie, I don't know if, it, if there's something you'd like to add on from a Universities Canada perspective. Yeah, I think Jeff, you've articulated that really well. What we've seen is a, a real shift to the value of in-person events since the pandemic. Um, we had a virt we had a, a, an in-person mission for university presidents planned to Vietnam uh, for 2020, and we quickly sh shifted to a virtual format. 
and it was the first time that we had attempted uh, to 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 essentially do a, a mission an outbound mission virtually and i think there was some some real lessons learned and some success, successes there um but i i think for for us our engagement abroad and specifically on on kayak we're seeing the real value of that in-person connection and energy and and partnerships so um I think we've we've got a, a great deal now of experience in in running virtual events, but I do think um, our experience with this particular series of conferences has been uh, very successful in person. One, one, Jeff, if I can say that one thing, what we're we're very cognizant that um, flying from Canada to Singapore, it's a significant investment in time, it's a significant investment in in money, um, and 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 one of the uh, vectors that we offer for the conference to help participants strategically connect and sort of like identify um, potential partners other than saying, hey, I saw you talking on the panel, that was great at, at the coffee break, let's let's go and chat. One, one of the um, vectors that, that we've developed for strategically connecting with others at the conference is, is through the conference app. And, and when you register the, for the conference, you're asked, do you want your contact information to be available to others to connect with through through this app? So this is a this is a way that that we can um, help you as conference participants strategically leverage your your participation to connect with um, say more to, to identify people and, and strategically connect with them rather than just bumping into people at, at um at the coffee breaks that's very good um but the uh the the conference app does offer um an extra um ability and an extra functionality uh that that you can use to to really be, be strategic about connections jeff you're on mute i'm on i'm on mute so there's a follow-up i i was just answering a question online there uh, there's a follow-up um uh, which I will read. So our institution is outside BC and Ontario. So even when you organize events in Canada, we don't get to participate either. For the Singapore event, it could be something later on in the year, instead of just putting everything of the main conference online. For example, creating a mini version virtually in May, June, so that it is a follow-up to the February conference instead of creating the same conference online. We simply cannot afford to send more than one person to Singapore as we're talking over $5,000 per person easily, flights and hotel. We do appreciate that and um, I, I'd love to follow up with you on the, on the ideas here. Um, uh, you know, the idea of a, you know, a mini version at, at a different time um, as a follow up, uh, this is precisely the kind of thing we're going to be building out now. Now that we've, we've established over these first two Februarys, uh, the conference as a flagship event uh, for uh, for uh, Canada Asia connections, and it's and it's growing. Um, uh, as I mentioned, we with the establishment of a, of a, an office and a, a team of of, uh, of ultimately probably be four people in Singapore um, to pursue various things in the region. The idea of mini mini conferences that could be have a, a sub-regional focus or a, a thematic focus um, and that some of these events could be could be hybrid events and or that we could also do events that would be fully virtual these are all things that we're going to be embarking on um, in the in the coming year and so there will be uh, opportunity throughout the year to to participate in things and in terms of you know events that we organize in Canada while well, our our head office is in BC and we have a, a substantial office in in Toronto. Um, um, we do we we do hold uh, some events in other parts of the country. We've done um, roundtables on on women and trade uh, right across the country over the past couple of years, and we're always on the lookout for opportunities to 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 lead or to be a partner in events uh, in other in other places. And uh, love to love to follow up on on suggestions uh, for that. And we do also um, uh, do many of the things that we've been doing in Canada in the past couple of years have been available uh, virtually, um, including live streaming. If you look on our website, you can see on 
on video, you'll see the, the record of things that were available uh, live at the time, including, including events, roundtables we've had with visitors, uh, such as the Foreign Minister of the Philippines and Canada's uh, Defence Minister, you know, talking about um, Canada-Asia engagement topics. Um, uh, Julia? Yeah, I think uh, I'm fully supportive of that. Um, I think what the 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 hybrid participation option um, could facilitate, a, a, you know, a, a broader participation, diversity in voices, um, you know, allowing those who cannot afford to travel or to send you know, more than one delegate to still participate in key sessions. I think the the um, the real benefit of attending in person are those enhanced networking opportunities as Jordan has highlighted and and even the cultural immersion piece um, I, I think is, is an important part but as we go through the various iterations and try to improve and make this more accessible to to our membership and and to more Canadians who are interested in in these partnerships and these opportunities I think there is uh, a variety of different ways that we can explore um, different ways of engagement. So I think uh, I think it's something that we can discuss in the future with the APF in terms of how to make mm -hmm. it more accessible. And I, I would just add also under the federal government's Indo-Pacific strategy, there are uh, resources available, including um, uh, there was a, a recent call for proposals for uh, support for initiatives that would involve uh, you know Canadians traveling to events in Asia so so I would encourage you to look at the uh, global uh, global affairs Canada there there'll be more of this type of thing coming out because they've they've committed quite a lot of funding over the next few years for Canada Asia engagement under the Indo-Pacific strategy um, with the express uh, uh, objective of making it possible, uh, particularly for groups and individuals who are less well resourced, to be able to, to get uh, government funding support uh, to participate in events. And, and we have some targeted programs. So for example, um, one, of, one element of the conference in February in Singapore is a tech investment uh, forum where we will be bringing um, selected uh, women-led businesses, so women entrepreneurs from Canada uh, to Singapore for the conference with funding that we have from the federal government under the Women's Entrepreneurship Strategy. So, so uh, there, there are some avenues for, for people uh, to be able to participate in the conference with support through, through various uh, government um, uh, programs. Um, and we're certainly looking for opportunities to expand that so that we can we can make it possible for those who who uh, would like to come to be able to come and that and that money shouldn't be um, shouldn't be the barrier but that said you know it is uh, Singapore if you're in central Canada Singapore is literally the farthest place in the world to go um, so it is uh, it is a big it is a big commitment but but you know, for those who are going to engage and looking for partners in the region, and I, and I hate to say it, but it, it's really it's really hard to do it without without spending some time in person there. It's uh, it's not impossible, and it depends on what your what your institutional business is uh, or your your private sector business. But but it is, um, it is definitely difficult. It's very far away and the relationships that one needs to build do require that, that investment of time and, that, and, and resources. And um, I, don't, I don't see any other questions in the Q&A and I'll, I'll ask our invisible host, Mandy. Do, Mandy, do we have any other Anything in the in the chat or hands raised? Nope, I don't see any here. Um, maybe give it a few minutes in case anyone else has additional questions. Maybe as a as a bridge um, yeah. for for anyone who's who's thinking of posing a question in in, in the Q and A. Um, registration for the conference is open. www canada-in-asia.ca 
that's the landing page. You can find out all about the um, specific conference sessions. Uh, the first tranche of conference speakers is up there. And there's a big red button that will allow you to, to register for the conference now. Uh, and uh, that website is now in the chat. Great. Uh, then I think um, I think we may have uh, we may have covered uh, things. I don't know. I'll, I'll do one more go around. Uh, Jordan, are there are there can can you think of frequently asked questions that you have fielded about the conference over the last couple of years? So so maybe a couple of buckets. What one is 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 what's in it for me, and and two is um, how do I get the most out of out of the uh, out of the experience um, I, on the on the what's in it for me question why, why should I go um, there are so there are so many reasons that that could be pertinent for, for your organization but within within your sort of strategic outlook on on Asia um, the Canada and Asia conference is a stable dependable, um opportunity and platform for creating connections um we'd love to hear from you to to find out more about what your objectives are uh and how we can best facilitate an environment that makes the most sense for what you're trying to achieve uh across the asia pacific region and with partners in uh in different institutions companies etc in asia um, and, and the second point I think is, is how do I go about doing it? And that is, um, it, it is a big, it's a big, it's a long way. It's a, a lot of time and a lot of money, uh, to, to be on the other side of the world for, for a week. Um, so it involves, it will involve some, some strategic thinking and, and, and some preparation. And to the extent that, that our small team can, um, uh, it can help with conceptualizing uh, what could make sense uh, in relation to your engagement. We can we can certainly try to uh, try to offer some suggestions that this session and that session, or there are these groups of people, or so these types of institutions that that uh, that will be attending uh, the upcoming conference. So happy to happy to receive uh, receive your questions and, and queries and, and and get back to you as uh, as quickly as we can. Again, I was on mute. Uh, je vais passer à Julia, just pour uh, uh, dernier mot, uh, dernier mot, quoi que ce soit. <laughs> thanks, Jeff. And uh, yeah, just once again, thanks for, for your interest, for joining us today at, uh, at the Kayak webinar. Um, hope you found the presentation and some of the insights and, and answers to your questions valuable. And Hope, hoping that you can all see the importance of this uh, this critical period in time as we we continue to strengthen collaboration between Canada and Asia and education research and cultural exchange and hopefully you can take these ideas back uh, to your various stakeholders and teams and and share a bit about what you learned today and just to echo Jordan's uh, invitation for questions if there's anything that uh, becomes that is not clear that we can clarify that you have questions on suggestions on we are most welcome both the APF and at Universities Canada so please don't hesitate to reach out. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much everyone for participating. We look we look forward to hearing from you and um, and to and to working with you in the in the future thanks uh, jordan and julia and thank you to our host mandy and uh, let's keep in touch bye for now